we've got some news on the vaccine front with Pfizer shares up three and a half percent now after uh, the CEO of Pfizer said he would likely apply for emergency use of uh, their vaccine candidate by late November after the election. This comes as we've seen a huge uptick in COVID cases here in the U.S. More than 65,000 new cases on Thursday alone, a big jump, and the first time we've seen that number since late July. Let's bring in Dr. Stephen McDonald. He is an emergency medicine physician. And Dr. McDonald, it's good to have you on today. Um, how, how are you processing this news on the one hand, seeing that potentially Pfizer could get to uh, more clarity on efficacy by the end of November, but at the same time, this coming as we see a huge surge across the country? Sure. So first off, it's great to be here. Um, you know, the news of a vaccine is something that everyone is really excited about. Uh, that said, for Pfizer to achieve an EUA, an emergency youth authorization, they have to demonstrate three things. The first is efficacy. The second is consistency, that it's efficacious across millions of people. And the third is safety, which I think is what most Americans are concerned about. Um, currently, they have to demonstrate two months of safety data, although the White House and Mark Meadows are pushing back on that at the moment. And so I think whether or not this drops the end of November will ultimately come down to how much meddling the White House does in processes that are already in place to ensure we deliver only the safest vaccines. To that point, there's been a lot of concern about the political pressure that could sort of circumvent the safety protocols in place for this vaccine development. As a doctor, are you comfortable with what you've heard from drug makers more recently, seeing the pause in the vaccine development from those like Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca, uh, hearing the CEO of Pfizer come out and, and talk about a little more of a timeline and what exactly is going to be the factor that pushes it to the market? Do you feel like the science has started to maybe take hold at a time when we've been talking so much about politics? I do. As long as uh, Dr. Fauci is in the CDC and is looking overlooking these processes, I do trust him. Um, I just had a was privy to a conversation with him recently that made me feel very much assured in the processes that are in place. That said, the, you know, there's two months to go. The White House could meddle in this process. And so we do have to keep a watchful eye. And the last thing I will say is that this is a disease that has really affected black and brown populations. And so one thing that I personally am looking at is how much, how many black and brown people are being recruited into these trials. And I'll be very interested to see the data when it release, is released. Let's talk about what we're seeing nationally here. Uh, we've talked more than 64,000, upwards of 65,000 cases reported on Thursday alone. When you look at where the uptick is, how quickly this is spread, what's your biggest concern? Well, you know, this seems to be now affecting the Western Mountain region. Uh, the concern there is that these are uh, locales and geogra geographies that don't have the same density of hospitals and doctors as you do in the Northeast or the Metropolitan South or California. Um, and so, you know, New York was completely overwhelmed, but at the same time, we have many, many hospitals in the New York City metropolitan area. That's really not the case where the disease is now surging. Um, and so, you know, that means that critical patients have fewer critical beds that they can be slotted to. That makes me very nervous. Um, additionally, this continues to ravage the most uh, disenfranchised populations. And so we're seeing rises in the Western Mountain Region prison system. And that's also very concerning. These are people who really can't advocate for themselves and can't seek care anywhere. And I wonder if we can pull up a chart here because we have some data from uh, the Harvard School of Public Health, the T.H. Chan School of Public Health, uh, that sort of compared where we have seen this latest surge in areas that lean more Republican and that lean more Democratic. And not to politicize the issue, but I am curious um, if you think there is a correlation here because there have been concerns about the mask wearing and the messaging coming from the president in some of these areas where he has a stronghold, um, we haven't seen the strictest measures in place. Can you speak to that data? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, to the extent that public health measures have become politicized, it really should be no surprise that we see that the spread of the disease is also um, runs along political lines. And so when you have a Republican president telling Republican supporters that mask wearing is not necessary, even after he's had coronavirus from a maskless event, um, it's no surprise that we see surges in Republican areas. Hopefully, um, moments like yesterday with Chris Christie saying, this is serious, I am a Republican, please wear a mask. Hopefully with more messaging like that, um, we will make this less of a political issue and more of just a general public health issue. 
But some of these areas that we are seeing in uptick, you pointed to the Mountain West, but rural areas in particular have become a big concern because they don't have the hospitals and the right. staffing in place, too. Um, how does that change the way we're, we respond to this more recent surge? What are you hearing from doctors in the field? So, um, you know, people are acknowledging that the hospitalization rate is increasing. Um, so as soon as, you know, you see first the rise in cases, then the rise in hospitalizations, then the rise in deaths. Uh, so, you know, the fact that we're already seeing a rise in hospitalizations, these systems are going to be overwhelmed very quickly, potentially more quickly than New York. Um, and so, unfortunately, I think the rise in the death rate is will be soon to follow. Are we in a better position now because of the information that's out there on this virus, but also the treatment that's available? I mean, how significant have the improvements been on that front? Significant. I mean, when I started treating coronavirus back in March and April, we didn't know dexamethasone was as effective as it is. In fact, we thought it might even be harmful. So I think the physicians treating the disease are absolutely better equipped in this moment. And we also are protecting our elderly and immunocompromised individuals more um, effectively than we were back in March and April. Um, that said, as long as people continue to flout mask wearing, as long as young people continue to congregate at uh, education in all institutions, um, this will continue to percolate in, uh, in high numbers. And how realistic do you think it is uh, to expect another more strict shutdown? I mean, you know, I ask this because we've been watching um, a lot of what's playing out in Europe with, with the disturbing uptick there. We've heard a number of countries like France and the UK talk about potentially reinforcing some of these re restrictions. I is that pretty much an unrealistic option in the US right now? Um, you know, how, how do you control this more, most recent surge if you don't have the, the strictest tool um, as an option? Sure. So uh, lockdowns obviously depend on who is in power. Um, because they're the individuals who are um, enforcing that law. Uh, I think as long as we have the current leadership in place and as long as governors are being left to make these decisions, in some cases like Florida, mayors are being left to make these decisions. Um, as long as that's the way the system's working, I wouldn't expect shutdowns anytime soon. Uh, that said, we'll see if, uh, if a Biden presidency were to happen, this could change very quickly. Dr. Stephen McDonald, emergency medicine physician there uh, in New York. Appreciate your time today. Thank you. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.